everyone, Richard here. I'm a Canadian-American high-realist painter living in Nova Scotia, Canada. For a number of years, I've been studying the compositions of early paintings, mostly those of the Renaissance period, to see if I can convincingly puzzle out if and how those artists use geometry as guides in the compositions of their paintings. Others have tried this, of course, most notably, perhaps, Charles Boulot in his book The Painter's Secret Geometry. But from my perspective, as a painter who occasionally uses geometry in my own work, what I've seen and read on the subject has been unconvincing. There was great interest in geometry during the time of the Renaissance. The period was marked by renewed study of classical learning of ancient Greece and Rome. While this included Pythagorean theories like numerology and music of the spheres, it also included theories about sacred geometry, a belief that certain geometric shapes and patterns have divine significance. Mathematics is the language with which God has written the universe, is a well-known quote by Galileo, an Italian astronomer and physicist of the late Renaissance. Artists at the time were often also mathematicians. Leonardo da Vinci, 1452-1519, a polymath and one of the greatest thinkers and artists of the High Renaissance, left behind hundreds of pages of notes, many filled with writings about geometry and including geometric diagrams like those shown here. The dissemination of information was made easier during this time with the introduction of the metal movable type printing press introduced in Europe around 1450. One notable book was published by Albert Dürer, 1471 to 1528, a German painter, printmaker, and theorist of the German Renaissance. His book, Treatise on Measurement, in 1525, brought together several classical and contemporary mathematical texts, along with the geometry Dürer had accumulated over his lifetime as an artist. Another very important book was published by Luca Pacioli, circa 1447 to 1517, a Franciscan friar and mathematician and close friend to Leonardo da Vinci. In Venice, in 1509, he published De Divina Proportiona, The Divine Proportion, which was illustrated in part by da Vinci. It was primarily concerned with mathematical proportions, with a focus on the golden mean, or as Pacioli insisted it should be called, the divine proportion. First defined by the Greek mathematician Euclid, circa 325 to 265 BC, the divine proportion attained its widespread reputation during the Renaissance due in large part to Pacioli's book. So the idea of incorporating geometry, such as the divine proportion, as an aid for composition would undoubtedly have been in the minds of artists of the time. And what better way than to embed this geometry in the composition of their work? Despite widespread speculation, however, whether they did or not remains largely unproven. An argument is made that, without proof, such as preliminary drawings that showed the clear use of geometry as a compositional device for paintings, there are a few, if any, such drawings. I've yet to find one. We simply can't know if an artist used geometry. In part, that's because we, as humans, tend to find pattern even when it's not intentional, as shown in these photos. So when we look at a painting and we see elements in the composition that appear geometric, we can't know for sure, the argument goes, if what we are seeing is part of a geometry that was used by the artists, or simply our own projections. Add to that, when done well, geometry doesn't overly announce itself. It doesn't fully show its hand. Geometry can be the bones of a composition, but not something we artists want a viewer to be too aware of. So the more clever an artist's use of geometry, the harder it will be to draw it out, to reverse engineer a painting to find its underlying structure. But having said all that, my feeling is that if geometry was used, it should be possible, at least in some cases, to find its structure in the painting's composition. 
Over the past few years, I've tried to do this. I've had mixed results, though often enough, those results have been quite intriguing. I do not claim to have found solid proof of the use of geometry in any of this. No smoking gun, yet. But I have found many intriguing hints of complex geometric substructures in paintings, often tying together more than one work by a given artist, and sometimes predicting a painting's original dimensions. So I've decided to do these videos. I hope you will find them thought-provoking. Now is a very good time to seriously study the composition of works of art. It's easier than ever to find very high quality, often uncropped images of paintings on the internet. And more and more of these images show the paintings with frames removed, so the edges of the paintings can be seen. As well, there's often a great deal of information about the condition of paintings, including if the painting is fully intact or has been cut down at some point, which unfortunately sometimes happens. Knowing if we are seeing the complete work in its original dimensions is important when trying to understand the artist's intent when composing their paintings. Composition relates to the edge of the work. As well, computers with programs like Photoshop are an invaluable tool and another reason why this is prime time for this kind of research. When geometry is mentioned, many people think mathematics and, unfortunately, high school geometry class with its endless formulas to be memorized. Geometry is a branch of mathematics, but there is no math, add, subtract, multiply, divide, involved in the construction of basic geometric forms. Of course, a computer is now used, a much more precise tool than early artists could have ever dreamed of. But all that was used in the past, and all that is needed, is pencil, paper, compass, and straight edge. The video that has been running here shows me using these simple tools to first construct a perfect square, then expanding that square to a golden rectangle. In my next video, part two, I'll explain how this project began and then explore the painting that started it all for me, The Virgin and Child with Saints and a Donor by Palma Vecchio. This project has been in the back of my mind for a long time. I'm extremely pleased to finally be doing these videos of my exploration of geometry and art, and I'm delighted to be able to share my discoveries with you. For information on my own work, visit my website at rtdavis.com. You can also find me on Instagram at Richard Thomas Davis Artist. Thanks for joining me.